Hello and welcome to the Old Flyers. The World War II Japanese fighter, the Mitsubishi Zero, was astonishingly light and nimble. Contrast that with the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, which was anything but light and nimble. Graham Rogers of the Imperial War Museum, Duxford, demonstrates how massive the Thunderbolt was compared to another World War II light fighter, the Supermarine Spitfire. The Thunderbolt, as you can see, is quite substantial. To put things in perspective, here's one of our little Spitfires, and over here, the Thunderbolt E7 wasn't without its flaws. It was quite slow in a climb and had pretty slow and sluggish acceleration, but was fantastically fast in a dive and could absorb an incredible amount of punishment from enemy aeroplanes and still keep flying. Superb in ground attack roles and probably one of the best fighters that America had at the time for ground support. The P-47 was designed around the 2000 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R2800 double wasp 18 cylinder radial engine which also powered the Grumman F6F Hellcat and the Voigt F4U Corsair. An advanced turbo supercharger system ensured the P47's dominance at high altitudes. Here is a rare World War II film made in 1943 to familiarize pilots with the Thunderbolt. Sure is a big ship. Pretty hot to handle, sir? Oh, I wouldn't say so. She's a mighty sweet airplane. Aren't there a lot of trick gadgets in this plane? Well, not much more than you have in training planes. Just a few things you need for high altitude work. And they put them where they're easy to use. To begin with, this is the biggest single-engine, single-seater in service. Has a wingspan just short of 41 feet. It's a little over 35 feet long. Stands 12 feet, 8 inches high. It weighs about seven tons with a full load. You've got standard instruments on your panel. Flight instruments are in the middle. Your engine operating dials are on the right. Notice that the speed limit on this airplane is redlined at 500. Here's your fuel level warning light. Remember that when it comes on, you've got a maximum of 20 minutes left to find a place to sit this baby down. Before you start going on altitude missions, the oxygen officer will give you the details on your oxygen equipment. You'll want to know how to check your oxygen equipment carefully, especially for leaks. You can see in this graphic a size comparison with the BF-109 and the A6M-50. Although it was a successful high-altitude fighter, it also served as the foremost American fighter-bomber in the ground attack role. Its primary armament was eight 50 caliber machine guns and it could carry five inch rockets or a bomb load of 2,500 pounds. When fully loaded, the P-47 weighed up to eight tons, making it one of the heaviest fighters of the war. This aircraft was credited with destroying 86,000 railway cars, 9,000 locomotives, 68,000 trucks and 6,000 armoured vehicles in both the European and Pacific theatres. Fondly known as the Jug for Juggernaut or Milk Jug, the P-47 Legacy lives on as the A-10 Thunderbolt, a purpose-built ground attack vehicle. Designer Cart Valley was a Georgian immigrant to the US and his design replaced the Seversky P-35 developed earlier by Russian immigrant Alexander D. Seversky. Both had fled from their homeland Georgia to escape the Bolsheviks. The XP-47B first flew on 6th of May 1941 with Lowry P. Brabham at the controls 
Although minor problems rose, such as some cockpit smoke that turned out to be due to an oil drip, the aircraft proved impressive in its early trials. By the end of 1942, P-47Cs were sent to England for combat operations. Two fighter groups already stationed in England began introducing the jugs in January 1943, the Spitfire Flying 4th Fighter Group, a unit built around a core of experienced American pilots who had flown in the British RAF Eagle squadrons prior to the US entry in the war, and the 78th Fighter Group, formerly flying P-38 Lightnings. The British Eagle squadrons had previously flown the British Spitfire Mark V's, a much smaller, slender aircraft. At first, they viewed their new fighter with misgivings. It was huge. The British pilots joked that a Thunderbolt pilot could defend himself from a Luftwaffe fighter by running around and hiding in the fuselage. US ace Jim Goodson, who had flown Spitfires with the RAF and flew a P-47 in 93, at first shared the scepticism of other pilots for their seven-ton milk bottles. But Goodson learned to appreciate the P-47's potential. Optimised for high-altitude work, the Thunderbolt had five feet more wingspan, a quarter more wing area, about four times the fuselage volume and nearly twice the weight of a Spitfire Mark V. The first P-47 combat mission took place on the 10th of March 1943, when the 4th Fighter Group took their aircraft on a fighter sweep over France, which proved a failure due to radio malfunctions. The first P-47 air combat took place on the 15th of April with Major Don Blakesley of the 4th Fighter Group scoring the Thunderbolt's first air victory against a Focke Wolf 190. By mid-1943, the Jug was also in service with the 12th Air Force in Italy and against the Japanese in the Pacific with the 348th Fighter Group flying missions out of Port Moresby, New Guinea. By 1944, the Thunderbolt was in combat with the US Army Air Force in all its operational theaters except Alaska. Although the North American P-51 Mustang replaced the P-47 in the long-range escort role in Europe, the Thunderbolt still ended the war with an aerial kill ratio of 4.6 to 1 in over 746,000 sorties of all times at the cost of 3,499 P-47s to all causes in combat. ACE's Lieutenant Colonel Francis Gabreski scored 28 victories and Captain Robert Johnson scored 27 flying the jug. The Germans were gifted a P-47 when 2nd Lieutenant William Roach made an emergency landing on a German airfield because of poor weather. Roach was imprisoned at Starlag Luft 1. With eight 50 caliber machine guns, the P-47 carried more firepower than other single-engine American fighters. P-47 pilots claimed 20 ME-262 jet fighters and four Arado AR-234 jet bombers in aerial combat. In the Pacific, Colonel Neil Kirby of the 5th Air Force claimed 22 Japanese aircraft and was awarded the Medal of Honor for an action in which he downed six enemy fighters on a single mission. The P-47 had a maximum speed of 426 miles per hour at 30,000 feet and a range of just over 1,000 miles. I found a fascinating archive of encounter reports of P-47 pilots that might be of interest to you. These personal stories make your hair stand on end. Due to continued post-war service with US military and foreign operators, a number of Thunderbolts have survived to the present day and a few are still flying. Thank you for watching. Donations can be made to support our channel by following this link. Like and subscribe to encourage new content.